Yes, we can uh, see the live stream on YouTube. Yep. Uh, so, Atharva and Yogesh, uh, there is a delay of about one yeah. minute for YouTube. So, yeah. uh, maybe while ending meeting, you can just wait for one, one minute and then stop it. Stop the screen. Right. Yeah. I'll do that. Uh, also, everyone on their Zoom, uh, please mute your YouTube audio so that it does not interfere with uh, Zoom. Let's begin. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone who has joined on Zoom and hello, everyone who is watching this on YouTube live on our channel, Jyotir Vidya Parisamstha. Uh, we have today a special lecture by Disha Savant. Uh, Dr. Disha Savant finished her PhD in astrophysics from University of Ferrara and INFN Bologna in Italy. She studied gamma ray data emitted from compact astronomical objects for her doctorate. And then she worked in PRL Ahmedabad as a research associate studying atmospheric data from Mars. Later, she also worked in IIT Bombay as a postdoctoral fellow, and she analyzed gravitational waves data from LIGO instruments. She has uh, about seven years of research experience in data analytics and data modeling, and she currently works in developing PKC's data-driven projects where citizens can contribute in analyzing big data. She is also very passionate for sustainability and is working on projects related to digitizing, automating, tree cover, and calculating and profiling carbon emission of Pune city. So something which is very critical for our, our city itself. Uh, I'll hand over to Dr. Disha Savant now for her lecture. Uh, thank you. Thanks for that uh, kind introduction. So hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to first thank Jyotir Vidya Parisastha for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to give this talk. So today I will be talking about how citizens can uh, contribute towards scientific discoveries. Uh, the talk is about citizen science programs conducted by Pune Knowledge Cluster. I'll just share my slides. Okay. Are these visible? Uh, yes. All right. So, okay. Uh, thank you again. Uh, let's begin the talk. So currently the problem statement that we are trying to address is uh, regarding big data. As we all know, currently big data is supposed to be the new currency, the, the money uh, in this world. Uh, also, the ever upgrading data sets, not only uh, in, uh, for example, in our social media, but of course, in scientific domains as well, are simply overwhelming to uh, work on, to analyze. So what, what can be done towards analyzing such big data sets uh, in, in really short time and effectively with accuracy? Uh, as I said, astronomical data sets are literally gigantic. We are having modern large telescopes and high technology instruments, uh, which give out gigantic data sets as we speak. It's happening in real time. Uh, also, there are trained astronomers uh, who are currently analyzing the data. Uh, you know, they come from professional backgrounds and uh, trained degrees. So here, because of the limited resources as well as uh, computational power, it is always a hurdle for astronomers or for scientists uh, to that uh, uh, matter to analyze this data quickly. A rapid analysis of such data set is crucial in order to also justify the ambitious observational programs that we uh, propose to the governments or uh, to the society. So uh, when it comes to astronomical data, let me give you one example here. Uh, here, as you see on the right, there, there is this plot uh, where we are having uh, galaxies featured uh, on X and Y axis giving angular momentum and mass. 
based on as you can see various shapes and sizes of these galaxies you can already make classifications about their mass uh, momentum and also their types uh, perhaps also uh, their evolution and formation so as you can see this kind of classification can very easily be done visually you just have to look at it uh, maybe uh, more closely in depth uh, some machines and algorithms can help us detect nuanced features but in first round by humana you can already detect some differentiating aspects within these galaxy types and such nuanced features indeed uh, help us empower the fantastic discoveries and upgrading our knowledge so now the problem is with big data big of course scientific data when it comes to galaxy again big data and what can be one go to solution for this so as we know now artificial intelligence ai is in, in the picture uh, ai can be one way to solve this issue so on the right i have just given a very basic uh, flow in which uh, machines can be trained ai algorithms can be developed to classify very basic aspects uh, even in our daily lives for example when we check our mails we are having spam and non spam or you know uh, very uh, dangerous emails and so on sometimes you receive these uh, funny mails from uh, kings of africa sending you uh, millions and millions of dollar so you know that it is a fake and perhaps a very uh, dangerous mail towards your cyber security so how do we train your machines there you tell the machine that okay look at my inbox the mails that i am ticking here are supposed to be spam or dangerous ones so never show them to me so what the machine does there is it develops this algorithm which picks up the keywords or which picks up specific email addresses and recognizes by itself that okay these emails are not supposed to be given ahead and that's how it blocks it as a spam and other mails are good to go so in this way imagine if we keep on feeding such kind of classification to our emails like with gmails with yahoo we receive uh, we keep on classifying this uh, on a daily basis and that's how that's how we are training the machines and the ai algorithms to uh, better accurately categorize mails so this is exactly how we can also uh, classify or you know at least do some preliminary kind of uh, filtration towards astronomical data using ai but for that of course uh, training sets are required and also currently ai is not at a such a developed level where it can already go on uh, analyzing gigantic data sets or even churning out uh, classification uh, nuances which can help us do it otherwise so the ray of hope here the ray of hope here is smart citizens citizen scientists uh, pkc's idea which is pune knowledge clusters idea uh, behind the citizen science projects is to involve citizens to get over the difficulty of exam examining such vast amount of data sets collected by scientists astronomers uh, basically researchers of any kind so let me just uh, talk a bit about pune knowledge cluster uh, pune knowledge cluster has been established by the office of principal scientific advisor to the government of india so basically it was conceptualized uh, as a knowledge cluster and that would work in various parts of india currently we have six such knowledge clusters uh, based in various cities one of them being pune and here the pune knowledge cluster aims to bring together academia r and d uh, and also industry in order to address the challenging problems or any ground based solutions that can be developed so that has has to happen through technological data driven means uh, and the focus areas that pune knowledge cluster uh, works on are big data and ai capacity building health sustainability and environment and sustainable mobility so as you can see the knowledge cluster is very much driven towards uh, solving or at least addressing the issues uh via the technological data driven media uh here with citizen science what we are trying to do is basically we are trying to leverage upon citizens vigilance and curiosity to generate training data sets for ai which can in indeed be helpful for designing algorithms to tackle big data not only in scientific stream but in general so here one example can be how in social media if you uh, if you realize that on facebook or on instagram when you are scrolling through the feeds if you are uh, 
paying attention to one of the posts or feed for the longer time the ai on the social media there is trying to learn that and see that okay uh disha is looking at cat pictures for more than 5 seconds so that means she's interested in cat cat videos or cat pictures so that is how it's training itself and imagine now almost everyone on the globe is using so social media so in this way all the citizens are there helping curate this training sets for ai and then to you know in that way the social media is getting optimized and then it is showing you exactly what you would like to see that's how it keeps you engaged so there we are we are not really the customers but we are the products because they are testing their ais on us and indeed we are paying them for using their apps or you know paying them uh, via using the uh, internet so in this way if we just utilize such citizens and their curiosity towards scientific discoveries we can generate training sets for ai uh, here the idea also is to curate such data sets which would be open to public currently what happens is uh, the scientific discoveries that take place uh, they are uh, either uh, limited to towards the scientific community they are being uh, published in uh, research papers and so on and often science enthusiasts or amateur astronomers in our case uh, may not get a uh, full feature or you know availed of all the things that happen so pkc's aim is also to give such data sets open and uh, free to analyze by anyone uh now i come to the setup here the beneficiaries are of course as i mentioned science enthusiasts in astronomical data sets it is uh, amateur astronomers we are having project students who work with us as well as the public the smart citizens and the partners that we uh, work with are of course ayuka pune being part of pune we are uh, covered by, uh, by various uh, enthusiastic science groups as well as science, uh, research in, uh, institutes ayuka being one of them Uh, then we are uh, supported by iia bangalore uh, some of the professors they have helped us curate such pro pro programs of course homi baba center for science education in mumbai they are also helping us with popularization of this program and we are having various planetaria uh, amateur astronomers groups uh, just like jyotirvidya parisamsta we have uh, many of their members also uh, part of this program and khagol vishwa pune so just to give you the introduction we are here talking about one project that we began the citizen science initiative with and that is called as 1 million galaxies uh, so in this we are uh, bringing citizens response towards analyzing nuanced features in galaxies here we are uh, focusing on the data sets that is that is curated from the japanese telescope subaru it's a 8.2 meter optical infrared telescope that is situated in hawaii and the project was proposed and uh, initialized by professor sudanshu barve of iia bangalore and of course professor ajit kembavi he is the principal investigator of pkc as well as ex director of ayuka and also uh, he is part of uh, jvp jyotirvidya parisanstha so how the program runs usually we conduct online zoom sessions for citizens where the uh, expert astronomers give the glimpses of what the project is about and also train them in real time about how to analyze the data it's fairly simple job we want to keep the things uh, very enjoyable and simple for citizens which is why uh, just a decent internet connection with any gadget like smartphone tablet or laptop would work and also the training sessions are uh, given for a very limited amount of time like 1 hour or max 2 hours so that it is not that much draining towards the, for the citizens and also at the same time they get to see some beautiful images of galaxies where the astronomers are actually explaining what goes behind those uh, images so it's sort of uh, fun and educational session and uh, in this way numerous interactions are arranged between uh, astrophysicists and the citizens they can always come up with their questions towards these training sessions and about galaxies and we are trying to build a community feeling out of such a project so the timeline goes as uh, we uh, initiated the project more or less in middle of 2021 Uh, we we thought of first doing the pilot run taking into account the uh, opinions from amateur astronomers we were uh, helped by a lot of members of jvp uh, khagol vishwa and other astronomers from other groups 
and around 50 such astronomers first tested our dummy website where we just created a survey page where a, a example features would be shown and the galaxies uh, to compare that would be shown and based on their feedback we tried to uh, sort of upgrade and enhance the website so why we took into account amateur astronomers opinion here it's very important because uh, such group of people are the perfect link between citizens and scientists they know exactly what public loves and they know exactly what scientists need so in that sense uh, getting their feedback and developing website in accord to their uh, opinion was very very helpful and it really paid uh, because from 20, uh, 2022 beginning when we opened a website for uh, the citizens we received a enormous response which was very very positive and overwhelming thanks to social media and all our outreach partners and currently the stage is the web platform is active it's ongoing and we would keep it going for a long term the idea here is not only to uh, host galaxies 1 million galaxies program but in future also other data driven uh, heavy scientific uh, analysis analytical programs so this is just the beginning we are receiving response from across the globe uh, by smart citizens uh, so now i bring you to the uh, snippet about how the website looks so all the people who are joining us currently they can always go to this link csa.vkc.org.in and sign up there to participate uh, when you are on the website, you will see the home page where we are describing what the citizen science with Pune knowledge cluster is all about. We also mention about our partners, our team, our ongoing and upcoming projects and all the resources that are required for you to participate in 1 million galaxies. So once you sign up, I'm showing you my dummy profile here. You will be given a nice gamified uh, version of your uh, user profile where your name, your performance batch, as well as other information about you is given. And also it tells you how many galaxies you have explored so far and how many are still there in the data set to be analyzed. So in this way, we are trying to keep the momentum going and uh, give food for your curiosity. Uh, here, the gamified version of such profiles help also to uh, for, for citizens towards, uh, you know, staying active for such citizen science initiative. Currently, I have just explored 303 galaxies and which is why I'm having performance uh, as a learner. So this is my batch. We are also uh, having higher batches here so that uh, the smart citizens can always pump up and give us more and more data analyzed. Uh, also, currently we are working towards uh, generating participation certificates the statistical procedures and all the thresholds that should be uh, applied here are currently in pipeline. So as I uh, mentioned, we had curated these online sessions by uh, expert astronomers. Uh, in this case, Sudhanshu Barve from IIA and also Professor Ajit Kembavi. Uh, we have curated them on YouTube channel uh, for, of PKC Pune Knowledge Cluster and as well as they are also available in the resource button on the uh, 1 million galaxies website. So I would urge all the citizens and uh, uh, enthusiastic students who would like to be part of this project to first thoroughly learn all these videos. You have to go sequentially. Uh, most of them are quite repetitive, but that is uh, designed by purpose because we want you to revise on various features and how you can differentiate between various galactic features. Because what happens is if you just go uh, analyzing the data without having training, it may get confusing. May, many features can be, uh, you know, uh, can be mistaken for another feature and so on. And also to learn about the physics behind it, it's important for you to go through all the sessions thoroughly and only then start the data survey. So once you are done with the uh, training sessions, this is what the uh, data survey page looks like. As you can see here, we are having the example features uh, listed. They And once you zoom on these, they just get zoomed. So bar, if you're clicking on it, it will zoom up and it will show you what a bar in a galaxy would look like, what a ring around a galaxy would look like, shell, tidal tails, and so on. So every time when you are on the survey page, the example features would always be uh, they're sticky so you know even if you scroll up or down they would always remain there 
and based on such comparison you can always look for features which you see in the questioned galaxy image and whichever features you find are matching you can click these options to feed in and submit so here it may sometimes happen that you may come across something very exciting something very weird and unusual in these galactic galaxy images and that feature or that specific signature is not enlisted in the options which is why we would like to also uh, ask you to type your unlisted feature or whatever that signature that you see briefly in this text box so in this way lot of the times uh, we end up having uh, fantastic discoveries because of the curious citizens being extremely vigilant and looking for these nuanced features so in this way i would like to give you one example here uh, just like how pkc is doing 1 million galaxies project there are also other uh, citizen science projects up, uh, ongoing and doing really nice work so one of them one of such platforms is zooniverse and on zooniverse there is one project called as galaxy zoo so what in galaxy zoo they do is they also give you galaxy pictures but there you are supposed to classify them based on just the morphology you're not looking at you know you're not looking beyond the morphology and uh, trying to figure out features you are only looking at more or less the shape and trying to classify the type type of the galaxy so uh, while participating in such a project there was a school teacher uh, from netherlands uh, hanny hanny van arkel and she was going through such galaxy data and what she realized was uh, so this was a galaxy that she was uh, looking at and she saw that there was this uh, weird green illuminated uh, feature just below the galaxy and in the unlisted features box for the galaxy zoo project she typed it saying that there is a woo warp below the galaxy so woo warp uh, that is dutch for object so she was trying to say that i don't understand what it is but there is something unusual in this image and later on the uh, astronomers who were analyzing the data had a look at it and what they discovered was absolutely amazing so they realized that the original galaxy picture was coming from interaction of two galaxies and when that interaction was happening the bigger galaxy was engulfing the smaller galaxy and the central black hole at the bigger galaxy was then you know getting illuminated uh, it was outshining as a quasar and this quasar rays which were getting emitted were being reflected by the tidal tail feature of this galaxy galaxy merger so that was some sort of an ionization echo it was some sort of a reflection of that light which was never noticed or observed before by instruments which were purposely designed to uh, observe quasars so this was something very un unusual and thanks to a smart citizen scientist they could discover this so this is what we mean when we ask you to also uh type your unlisted features here you have to be uh, uh extremely uh, free and um, vigilant about it you can just look at the image thoroughly apart from the central galaxy for which the features you are already classifying please look around if you find anything unusual or weird please uh, type it in the text box okay so now i uh, move forward uh based on the 1 million galaxies project i would like to uh, happily show you the what the statistics are in terms of citizens response so so far as we speak we are having around 1200 citizens joined uh, on the platform uh, gender based participation is more or less 38% for women and 62 for men uh, we urge all the uh, all the girls all the women uh, amateur astronomers who are who have joined the course to please participate please uh, put uh, your inputs here uh, we would like to see more women uh, participating in the program and in terms of uh, response from amateur groups uh, we are having J uh, jyotir vidya parisansta as you can see 4% of our uh, smart citizens come from there then we are having khagol vishwa uh, various planet area and other so you know initially even though we started with just pune centric smart citizens because of word of mouth and because how simple the platform is it just spread over i mean we ourselves started receiving posts and social media uh, tags uh, from various uh, accounts so i think the program is already spread over 
and people are getting uh, notices about this so most of our smart citizens come now beyond uh, from pune uh, here a uh, demographically also i would like to show of course uh, our uh, many of our smart citizens are connected uh, mainly from maharashtra because we started the journey from pune but we are also having significant contribution from kerala karnataka uh, west bengal uh some of us have some of them have already also joined from overseas uh, we have some students from bangladesh some from nepal who are also actively participating in this program and just uh, on a uh, on a broader scale if we would like to just see what the classification looks like for now so let's keep in mind we have not focused on any specific uh, area or a region in the sky from where the galaxies are getting collected so nothing scientific as such can be drawn from the data that is analyzed so far we need much more data to be analyzed which is why uh, we uh, use podiums like this to advertise the city uh, 1 million galaxies project but what we see is mostly the spiral feature gets picked gets picked up uh, very uh, dominantly by citizens uh, uh, following that with dust lane shell and interacting galaxies uh so so far we have received around 70000 uh answers so technically 70000 features uh have been looked at by the smart citizens and here i bring to you uh, the feedback that we have received from the smart citizens uh, there is one uh, student he is a bangladeshi student al mohajadin uh, al mojahid afridi sorry so uh, and another girl from ernakulam so why we pick these two to highlight is because uh, uh, afridi is from bangladesh and he is just doing things on his own uh, he is not having much resources he is trying to build a amateur astronomy group among his college uh, peers and in his society in his neighborhood so he was uh, extremely excited to be part of this and he wrote a mail to us appreciating our efforts and how much uh, this program is helping him understand about the uh features of galaxies and shruti uh, from ernakulam she was the first smart citizen who finished uh, analyzing uh, all the galaxies that we have uh, in store for uh, the citizens now currently we uh, hold around 1000 uh, galaxy images and she was the first one to finish all of them of course statistically and scientifically accurate results are uh, yet to be uh, disclosed they are in pipeline but you know her smart uh, her vigilant behavior and her curiosity brought her uh, as the topmost contender who finished analyzing all the images uh, uh, first so just for the uh, technically driven uh, smart citizens that we have uh, tonight i would like to uh, just uh, speak briefly about the framework so the uh, website is developed using python and django platform uh, we are having mysql for uh, storing the database currently around 3 gb of data is being handled so this consists of survey data that means the galaxy images uh, the answers uh, re uh, recorded by citizens and their login information and the website is updated regularly with new data sets so time and again we keep on adding new images uh, so that the momentum keeps going and we keep on receiving larger and larger training set uh, for our ai algorithms to develop and correct answers would be validated by scientists uh, which it will eventually be used for training the algorithms so what is in store for us now the work pro uh, in progress a uh, few pointers adding here uh, so citizens performing statistically well uh, will be certified currently we are uh, doing that i mean uh, it is also uh, happening at the back end where we are trying to identify which citizens have done uh, tremendously well in order to give us statistically most accurate and abundant data also uh, whichever citizens are you know playing active role not just in analyzing the data but also keeping in touch or bringing in more participants we would like to absorb them in future as 1 million galaxies moderators and volunteers so they can be at this side of the uh, uh, of the program helping us uh, run this uh, these projects and we would also like to develop a blog page or some sort of a platform where citizens and astronomers can interact more freely 
So since the website is already up, we we are already doing online sessions where astronomer, astronomers give uh, nice insights and uh, uh, they also present us more or less studies from scratch uh, about galaxies or in future about other astronomical objects. We would like to use this uh, podium to also curate and archive dialogues between scientists and uh, citizens community and also technologically driven sound citizens because we keep on receiving requests from IT professionals or uh, anyone who is uh, technically sound in terms of astronomy or big data that they would like to help us uh, uh, or contribute more towards data analysis. So we are also now thinking about how we can uh, uh, reward their uh, contributions towards maybe developing the software or the website and designing the AI algorithms. So I welcome, I urge all of you to have a look at this website. Uh, whoever is uh, having more interest, you know, in terms of big data analysis or designing algorithms to picking up uh, for picking up uh, uh, features from images, uh, you can always uh, have a look at the website, write to us and we will get back to you. Uh, so that was about 1 million galaxies. Now, PKC is also committed towards uh, running such programs uh, in future as well. So another project that is coming up is about identifying uh, variabilities in quasar spectra. So as I was mentioning, uh, quasars are something like active galactic nuclei that sit in the center of the galaxy. And in order for us to learn about the variable nature of such quasars, we need to look at the spectra. So spectra is more or less, you can think of uh, on x-axis, you, you have the wavelength and on y-axis you have the brightness. So you are looking at uh, how much light, uh, how, ma how many photons were collected within each wavelength band. And based on different time epochs, you can actually compare the features that got varied among the quasar, uh, within that quasar timeline. So here uh, we would be involving smart citizens to tweak the data, more or less first to just, as you can see here, this is a dummy panel. Uh, which we are trying to develop, where we uh, change various aspects of the spectra, various features uh, get um, modified accordingly. And based on such modifications, you can compare uh, two spectras of the same quasars, but you know, just emerging from two different times and answer a few questions. That's how we would like to study the variability in quasars. So this is a, a project that is coming up uh, so uh, we would like you to stay tuned and uh, please uh, be glued to our website. So anytime then this project opens up, of course, we will be announcing it on social media as well as mails. But if you have already registered uh, on our website, you will receive more information about it and you can participate right away. Again, here we would be having training sessions by uh, uh, astronomers and astrophysicists to make you understand about the spectral aspects of astronomical objects better. And in future, we would uh, not only like to include citizens, but uh, just, you know, to do visual inspection, but also uh, empower the uh, maybe visually challenged citizens or, you know, help them understand about astronomy better. So here we are having varied opportunities here. Our focus uh, uh, would be on the citizens who are maybe visually impaired. Uh, what we would like to do is uh, bring bring to them the tactile sets where you know they can understand about the, the morphology and the features of surface of planets or as you can see uh, on the right hand side uh, various uh, morphological features of galaxies and understand about astronomy better also uh, in order for them to contribute towards data analysis uh, we we are trying to inculcate a technique which is known as a sonification technique. So sonification technically means uh, converting any kind of data into sound or into uh, tunes. So if you have anything in X and Y, uh, there is this uh, phenomenal astronomer called Dr. Wanda Diaz. I have uh, put her picture on the top. So uh, she has developed this software uh, called sonification software. So a uh, little something about Wanda. Uh, during her PhD, uh, due to some um, unfortunate event, uh, she started losing her vision. And for her to uh, 
it, it was a big shock and then for, for her to how now how do i finish phd how do i study astronomy and astrophysics she was uh, determined enough to develop this wonderful software which just converts astronomical data into sound waves so she started listening to astronomy and that's how she started uh, doing her research uh, so one example uh, maybe you all know about this example this has nothing to do with what uh, wanda did or wanda is doing but it just gives you glimpses of how astronomical data can be heard so i'm just putting that uh, now so this is gravitational waves data and you look look so that blip itself was a signature of the gravitational wave getting detected and in this way imagine if we can convert beautiful astronomical data into sound waves so for example here you see we are having uh, a star which is of around one solar radii and a planet is going around it when you are looking at its spectra or the uh, the the light curve you see that the brightness just gets hampered when the planet passes uh, i mean when the planet is in between the observer and the source and rightfully so if we are having a smaller sun but with a similar radii of the planet you will see bigger dip in the bright brightness now imagine if we can convert such a data into audio sound you can always hear maybe a reduction in the volume or change of frequency and that is how you you will know that there there has been some change in the data so if we can develop a sonification project now wanda has curated this software and it is openly available if we can leverage on that uh, get as maybe uh, exoplanets data to run on it uh, we can actually empower visually impaired uh, citizens and they can actually empower the scientists uh, in return by analyzing such wonderful audio tunes and maybe uh, who knows we can uh, discover nice exoplanets or uh, some sort of uh, uh, star planet duo thanks to such uh, data analysis by uh, visually impaired citizen scientists so this is also something that uh, we aspire to do in future mm, okay then i move on uh, so here uh, i would like to conclude with the vision for pkc and uh, in terms of the citizen science project what pune knowledge cluster is uh, thriving to do is to develop this ground breaking state of the art uh, web platforms where uh, scientists can provide any kind of data and the citizen science program can be customized towards their uh, need or towards their goals so you may not be just limited by images or uh, just by spectra but it can in future be uh, maybe handwritten notes or plots where you would need citizens involvement in decoding or digitizing them so we would like to provide such a um, all in one platform for scientists as well as for citizens and this can be ju not just astronomy but any other uh, scientific uh, domain uh, the data should be open for all that's what uh, pkc uh, believes and computational resources back end support can also be provided for science enthusiasts and scientists uh, based on the uh, importance and the gravity of the project bring out community aspect as i was mentioning we are uh, planning to bring this a uh, blog page where uh, scientific and community uh, based development can go hand in hand thanks to the interaction between citizens and researchers and in this way we would like to imbibe scientific temper within the society that is also one of the goals set by the department of science and technology towards scientific community so on this note i would like to uh, thank you all for giving me this opportunity to uh, project and explain all the citizen driven projects that pune knowledge cluster is doing uh, i have uh, ended my slides with a bunch of uh, links useful links uh, please note them down you can take screenshots and visit our websites visit our uh, citizen science uh, web application there are training sessions curated on youtube channel also get to know more about our capacity building activities so apart from citizen science pkc is also uh, committed towards doing teacher training programs uh, 
uh, uh, high level uh, courses and workshop for professionals and so on you can get all that information from our website and our youtube channel and feel free to get in touch with us by writing to us at citizen.science@pkc.org.in so with that uh, i thank you all and i end my presentation thank you uh thank you very much dr disha savant for uh, this really interesting and enlightening uh, lecture uh, uh, everyone in the audience uh, you you may have taken the screenshot of dr disha savant's last slide where all the links are provided uh, if you have not uh, we have provided the citizen science link in the youtube live chat as well uh please visit uh, csa.pkc.org.in and pkc.org.in uh for more uh dr savant uh, just one question on the upcoming projects in addition to the two or three that you mentioned uh, how can people find out about uh, the next projects in astronomy uh, related to citizen science will will you be publishing them on the csa a website yes yes absolutely so uh, i would urge then uh, the citizens to uh, stay tuned to the pkc's uh, main website which is pkc.org.in we keep on uh, mentioning highlights and upcoming events features there and also uh, whoever registers on the csa.pkc which is currently the 1 million galaxies website they receive emailers frequently so any upcoming projects and events or workshop that we would do we would be sending uh, mail notifications as well okay thank you very much thank you very much everyone for attending the lecture uh, once again thank you very much uh, dr disha savant for a really interesting and enlightening lecture thank, thank you. you thank you